The City of Harare Emergency Services is a division meant to save life and property through the provision of fire protection, firefighting, rescue and emergency medical management and conveyance of patients, residents of Harare and residents of the surrounding areas. The division is made up of fire brigade and ambulance service sections. The division head office is situated at the Harare Central Fire Station at number 111 Belvedere Road and has four sub offices in Belvedere, Waterfalls, Greenville and Kuwazana. The Chief Fire Officer, Love Moma Fukidze, gives us more insight on their duties as the emergency services within the city of Harare. The emergency services comprises of two sections, which is the fire brigade and the ambulance services. The fire section uh, does rescue and firefighting. It also is a fire prevention section, which it does a inspections of buildings so that they are in compliance with uh, the bylaws. They also scrutinize and endorse plans when uh, new buildings are constructed so that we, we, we put the requirements uh, in the bylaws uh, uh, in regards with, 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 with fire safety. We do licensing of uh, flammable liquids in Harare. All those that uh, deal in, in, in flammable liquids are supposed to be, to be licensed. We do, we do that. We issue uh, a certificate of occupants after the buildings are constructed and we have inspected them and we have verified that all the requirements according to the bylaws have been met. Uh, in the ambulance section and fire section also, we do training, we do fire training for the industry, we do fire training for other brigades, we do fire training for other uh, uh, customers from the region. And in the ambulance uh, uh, service, we also have a school that does training in emergency uh, uh, medical services. The current economic situation of crunch foreign currency shortages has not spared the city of Harare emergency services. We asked Mr. Mafukidze about the status of their equipment and their capacity to handle any situation. It's, it's, it's not adequate, but the equipment that we have is very efficient. As you can see, the fire appliances that we have are state of the art. Although they have been there for some time, they need a replacement from time to time. The other issue that uh, 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 we face as, as, as emergency services is most of our equipment is, is, is bought from, from, from outside the country and you know we have got problems with, with, with foreign currents and all the equipment and the prices are very prohibitive. There have been reports that the fire teams get to fire scenes without water. The chief fire officer adamantly refutes this allegation and gives us light. Um, we, we, we have heard that quite a, a number of times but I'm happy to say that has never happened. What our, 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 our red payers and, and, and stakeholders should do, understand is a fire tender is a vehicle that carries quite an array of equipment. It doesn't carry water alone. This vehicle carries about 1,800 liters of water. When we get there, that water, we, we, we refer to it as first aid water. That is the water that we are supposed to use as we get to the scene. Whilst the firefighters are looking for the alternative supply of, of water, which are street hydrants. And if, if I, may to, I may say, these fire tenders are tested at 9 o'clock when, 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 when the shifts interchange. And at 7 o'clock in the evening, they carry out what they call a roll call. In that roll call, everything is tested to, 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 to see that everything is functional. The water tanks are checked, are refilled. There is no way a fire tender can leave a fire station, a fire station without water. Even if you were to go around, there are fire tenders that are off-run. They, all, we always, they always have water. The reason is keeping water in their tanks will save the tanks. They don't rust. They, 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 to prolong their, 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 their lives. No fire tender leaves a station without water. But because uh, they are designed to carry a specific amount, when we get to the scene, we use that water and that, when that water is depleted, people will, will then say they came without water. But no fire tender leaves a fire station without water. Firefighting and emergency services is traditionally regarded as a man's job because of the strenuous training, general fitness, as well as the risk involved. However, 
That is not the case with the staff complement of the City of Harare Emergency Services Department, as women are now part of the brigade. Agnes Chindrinde, a supervisor in the Fire Services Department, takes us through a day in the life of a firefighter and how she balances that and being a mother as well. I saw an advert, then I, I, I felt I should challenge this man. This is a man in fire manager a job. So I just felt I should challenge this man and join them in the fire service. Uh, I'm, I'm the first female firefighter in Harare, the pioneer one. So I just wanted to break new ground. Yeah, that was my wish. When I get here, I change into my uniforms, then do my duties. I'm a leading firefighter. I do my roll call. We do roll call first thing in the morning, our parade. Then I give duties to my fellow firefighters. Then I, the whole day, for me, is for the supervision of my fellow firefighters. I supervise firefighters. Yeah, that's the main duty of a leading firefighter. Being a woman and working from nine in the morning and nine the following day in the morning again, 24 hours. But now I'm coping because of the training that I went through. I went through. And also, I also felt the challenge of this trainer's job. Firefighting is a difficult job. Yeah, but now I'm, I'm managing well. My family, they are very proud of me. Uh, I'm married to Chinjente uh, with three kids, girls. Those girls, they address me as their heroine. They are very, very proud of their mother. Regardless of the safety precautions put in place, there's great risk involved in this field. Casualties and even death can occur on the part of firefighters. I got injured on the 16th of October in 2016 in Granite Side industrial area. We responded to a fire call around 10.00 hours. Um, when we arrived at the incident, um, <clears throat> the report that we got is that there were persons who were trapped inside the building. Um, but when the officer in charge tried to make an evaluation of the situation, uh, there were no signs which could show that there were flammable liquids that were stored inside the building. So when we entered the building, so we were fighting the fire as well as searching for the victims. But after some minutes, uh, there was an explosion. But unfortunately, we were already inside the building. So <clears throat> visibility um, became actually impaired because of because of the fire, so you could not see anywhere to go. But I then, uh, I then to to crawl down, and I started crawling from the point where we were uh, tracing the walls. So these bent hands here, they actually, they, these hands were actually bent because I was crawling in boiling ethanol. It was that was the only way uh, to trace the way back. And the other colleague who had lost his way, uh, with Nabot Shahita, grabbed the, the heel of, of, my, of my leg and also continued to crawl as we um, maneuvered out of the building. Um, in short, that's how I got injured. Some residents have a tendency of vandalizing fire hydrants. The chief fire officer, Love Moma Fukidze, explains the importance of these connections in case of a fire. Yeah, there are some cases where, where we go to, to places where we find the, the fire hydrants, like we've said, they are vandalized or the, the, the signs that depict their, their positions are, are, are defaced or they are removed. And then you will find firefighters after the, the water that is in the appliance is, 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 is run out. You will see them moving from the, 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 the incident, going to fetch water from the, the nearest hydrants. We always encourage the residents to not to deface or vandalize these fire hydrants because they are there for a purpose. The reasons why they are there is when our firefighters get, get, get there, they know how to locate them. 
but in most instances you will find a fire hydrant that is situated in front of, 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 of a residential stand there is now loan on top of the, the, the cover. They cannot locate it, maybe it's during the night, they will have problems. They will then move to a hydrant that they can locate, which is the nearest from where they are. Fires result in the loss of lives, property and environment, which the city of Harare desperately need to get to the next level. In this regard, an effective emergency services department contribution to the achievement of a world-class city status by the year 2025 cannot be underestimated.